If you have family members who were last seen at Ellis Island between the years 1949 and 1954, you may be entitled to some compensation. <laughs> Better call Saul! Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where today we are back on the couch doing some live theory crafting. Uh, this is a series that I've seen pop up a little bit on my Twitter, on Reddit, and I had Ash look into it. Uh, you guys have been requesting this for a while, or at least a handful of you have been requesting it. Uh, Monument Mythos? I think is is the name of it, or it's it, it, the channel series. I, I don't exactly know what it is. I've tried to stay blind to it. One, because I'm busy, but then two, usually I'll, I'll hop in and check things out. Uh, but I figured this might make a, since a lot of you, uh, especially here on GT Live, have asked for it, might be a good live theory crafting one. So, Ash, uh, introduce me and the rest of the internet to uh, Monument Mythos, or what, what we can expect here. Yes. So, you know, just after a little research, a little browsing, you'll see I did some watching on on the little little playback bar but <laughs> <laughs> on the old youtubes yeah on the, uh, the old little like red progress bar yeah, thing yeah uh -huh. i just don't want people to think that you're a little lying little cheater little 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 trickster you know what i mean monument mythos yeah right? so let's say that um mandela catalog yes and all the analog horror okay. people got a little feisty and they were like you know what we're gonna take on next conspiracy wow. about Monuments. History and monuments. Oh. <laughs> so it's like take it's like so it's, alternative history. Yeah. But it's kinda spooky. So like aliens brought in the pyramids or like aliens delivered you know. The... It's a little a little different, but okay. I kinda want you to okay. figure that out. Okay, cool. Yeah, great. So I mean that's that's good. Monuments, yeah. Untapped potential of monuments. Great. Uh oh my gosh, is I'm trying to think of a good monument that would be funny. In terms of like, like the Arc de Triomphe suddenly comes alive and like, start, I was thinking oh, of like, oh, that's the, fun. Doosh, 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 He's like doosh, a little doosh. pair of pants. Yeah, I mean like, <laughs> right, the Arc de Triomphe in France, big archway, looks like cartoonish pants, comes to life and starts like waddling down the oh, Champs Elysees. Oh. Welcome to Monument Mythos. Uh, let's let's just hop into it. So this is uh, the first. Is this first yes. upload? This is upload number one. Yes, this oh. is well. I guess the first episode was kind of the teaser trailer, but this is like the first episode. First episode, episode. Yes. Okay, Liberty Lurker. Okay, so presumably Statue of Liberty then. Correct. Okay. The following audio is an excerpt from an 1889 interview with the designer of the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Frederick August. The most difficult aspect of the construction... Oh, sorry. I, he's So he's speaking in French, so... Uh, the most difficult aspect of the construction was the pedestal. Huh. I don't know if that's true. That would be interesting. Although the statue was intended to be a gift, the U.S. ambassador urged us to follow President Grant's request. We agreed, and each month we received varying size requirements for the pedestal. After four years, requests to change the size of the pedestal ceased. People wonder why the pedestal is so much taller than the lady, and I tell them... All I tell them is, ask the Americans. Hold up. Sorry. And I know we're, again, like, this is me live theory crafting, but, again, this is how my mind works. Uh, Statue of Liberty. Lib liberty. Um, is the pedestal, I guess I, huh. I guess I never really thought about it. But it is a really tall... Like, I will say, when you, when you actually go see the Statue of Liberty, it is smaller than you would think. But yeah, also a lot of its height is given to the pedestal. That's it. I hadn't... I've never considered that. But that's a really good observation there. I didn't know... Oh, it's it's the alternates. They're, they're building it, I'm sure. Um, how tall... Yeah. How tall is the Statue of Liberty pedestal? Now I'm curious. Okay. The Statue of Liberty is 151 feet tall and stands on a pedestal that's 154 feet tall. Huh. That's really fascinating. Cool. And then uh, Top Thrills Dragster, which it, it's funny because Statue of Liberty is always a thing that you measure roller coasters against. 
because a lot of roller coasters are around like the three, you know, if you're talking about like Millennium Force, it's around the 300 foot mark. And then in the newspapers when I was growing up, they would compare it against like Millennium Top Hills Dragster, which is 400 feet tall. So, but yeah, you would always see the diagrams where they're like, it's over the Statue of Liberty. So 154 feet tall is the pedestal. Okay. So that's good context. In 1949, the statue underwent extensive re renovations. The official blueprint behind the changes, titled STLI, Statue of Liberty, 1.8084, was classified for 36 years. Huh. I wonder if this is true. Because I wouldn't be surprised if, like, this was true just for some reason. And then, okay. Oh, weird. Provide entrance for sustenance. Install engine to assist with eventual departure. And it's, and it's double layered here, so I, I, it does look like it's one and the same underneath. It's just a weird shadow. Are they feeding the statue? Entr entrance for sustenance? Okay, there's an engine. Is it like a robot? Axle. Turns. Wheels. <laughs> I just, I like the idea of the Statue of Liberty on Heelys. <laughs> Rolling away! <laughs> okay, that's the entrance. Sure. Stairs. Or it being like a giant lighthouse? That's cool. A drain for water. Rain. Waste storage. It poops. The Statue of Liberty poops. Oh, she's a lady. Women don't poop, even women statues. Come on. During the summer of 1954, thousands of immigrants described a foul odor while passing. Oh my gosh, is this true? Is, is she like. Is the Statue of Liberty really a living creature that poops? Please make that be the case. Passing through Ellis Island. Oh no. And on wheels, no less. A wheeling, pooping Statue of Liberty. Here we go. Ellis Island was awful. The whole place reeked of flesh like a slaughterhouse. There were also dead birds everywhere. My sister even found one in the toilet. If this is how the coast is, my father said, imagine how bad the city smell. I remember hearing other families half-jokingly say that they wanted to return to Milan because of the smell. <laughs> My family had sprayed perfume and burned candles to keep the stench away, but it would only work for an hour or so until the air became unbearable again. The evenings were so hot I stayed mostly awake even though the rest of my family slept soundly. I mean, that's true regardless of the Statue of Liberty pooping. <laughs> if you're in New York, it is so hot. That's one of the reasons we moved away, because during the summer in New York, it's so hot because the sun blares down and it's all city, so it just like just reflects off the pavement and so it just swelters. There's, no br there's relatively few breezes because the buildings are blocking a lot of it. And then, uh, and then add to that, you know... Uh, in this era, right, they wouldn't have air conditioning, but even modern day, air conditioning is so expensive that you don't turn it on. So you just lay there melting in a pool in your apartments. A lot of times you're not, you know, a high rise or whatever. It's, it's, it's tough. New York in the summer, the, New York in the summer and winter is really hard. New York in the spring and fall, great. Expensive. I remember looking out the window each night and seeing lines of people being led to the statue, the Liberty statue by officials. Oh, they're being fed to the machine, aren't they? After they would go into the pedestal, the officials would leave, and nothing else would happen. Give me your tired, your poor, give me the tired and poor masses into the Statue of Liberty. Oh man, the following morning would smell so much worse though, like a slaughterhouse. The Ellis Island Immigration Station closed the following November. Okay. August 1985, first sight of the Liberty Lurker. It's moving. Oh! There's something underneath it! I'm like, is the statue move? I also like that no one in the entire city of New York has noticed this thing. Like, hey, that statue out in the middle of the very publicly facing, like, bay, that's fine. Ah, fine. Wait, I want to see that again. That was amazing. So it lives in the pedestal. So it's not the statue. It's like a creature that lives under the statue. It pops out sometimes. 
Upon investigation, local authorities liken the waste storage compartment to a mass grave. If you have family members who were last seen at Ellis Island between the years 1949 and 1954, you may be entitled to some compensation. <laughs> Better call Saul! Liberty Lurker. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I love that it was a legal film at the end. Like, <laughs> the thing is, though, this... You're, you're mixing the, the genres a little bit. It should have been a lot more obnoxious if it was one of those, like... Because it would have had to start with, like, a... Er, er, attention. You or a loved one might be, uh, you know, might be available for some compensation. You might be entitled to some compensation. Follow the, follow the below. If your loved one had been... Like, I've watched... Trust me. I have watched a lot of daytime television back when I was growing up to watch, like, Price is Right or, like, daytime uh, game shows. Loved them ate them up but buried in them because the people who are watching them are like elderly retired people and kids on their day home from from school sick uh you know they're all those kind of like uh those sorts of legal chase ads so i'm very familiar with those um cool that is not that did not go where i expected i thought for sure the statue was going to come to life at some point so i'm excited all right liberty lurker that's awesome uh Rushmore Revenge. <laughs> that just sounds like a it sounds like a mobile game. <laughs> Sewer Surfers, Temple Run, Rushmore Revenge. <laughs> it really does. It does, doesn't it? I'd play that. I would play it. I would play the heck out of Rushmore Revenge. I could see it, like what would the gameplay of Rushmore Revenge be? Mm. Each uh there's like I can see it going a lot of different ways, actually. You know how in, like, Super Mario they got worlds? Yeah. I think each world <laughs> is a face on on Rushmore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> FDR. Yeah, and then at the end of the world you, you have to fight the spirit. I, I, that was one of the ones that came to my mind is, like, it's yeah. a... It's a it's a it's a battle kind of game like a one v one fighter game or something where you fight each individual <laughs> president like yeah, Lincoln Land. Is like, I think that still president fight is at the end like the final boss. Like I think there's got to be levels before that. Oh oh yeah no the, I think you're right. I think that there needs to be a little bit more. I think the idea of a general beat 'em up or one v one battler with the presidents is just great in general. The fact that no one has done that, as far as I'm aware of, in, like, indie game form, is a travesty. Can you imagine? You know, like, New Deal! New Deal! New Deal! You know, it's just throwing stuff out there. You, you could have, like, Trump, like, do a toupee toss or something. Like, he, like, rips off his hair and, like, throws it like a boomerang or something. You have, you have like, uh, Abraham Lincoln with a stovepipe cap, like, pull it down, and he, like, launches, like, a little steam out of it, or he has an axe because he's known for, you know, being an honest Abe and chopping down trees and this and that. So, he'd have an axe. Rushmore Revenge! Rushmore Revenge, here we go. August 7th, 2003, the National Park Service finds the Mount Rushmore National Memorial vandalized. No, oh, no. The U.S. government can and can something find mass murder. Fund. Fund mass murder if it's slap, if it's labeled, if it's labeled as a national monument. Okay. Okay, okay national monument. Uh, ex execution of 2,600 American landmarks. The souls, the souls of Lincoln will, oh my gosh, are they, are, is it possessed? Oh, please tell me it's possessed. The blood of liberty will be avenged. But blood of, yeah, liberty will be avenged. The souls of Lincoln. I like that Lincoln doesn't have just one soul. He has multiple souls. The souls of Lincoln will be freed. Oh, man, please. Is this what's going to happen? Are they going to do, are they going to do our video game here? They're going to crack open the Mount Rushmore. Oh, great. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Watch the video, man! <laughs> huh, what is this? Let's analyze it. How about you just watch the damn video, man? <laughs> Darn it. The U.S. government can fund mass murder if it's labeled as a national monument. Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Every day, executions occur in 2,600 Americans. In 2,600. I didn't know America had 2,600 landmarks. 
Do you imagine, like, the giant pistachio or the world's largest ball of yarn is having these mass executions happen? They must. They must, right? They must. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> Underneath Yellowstone National Park, you have, like, Old Faithful. And Old Faithful's like, feed me! <laughs> Shove it into the, like, geyser hole. It's fine. <laughs> the blood of liberty will be avenged. <laughs> what would be the funniest? What would be the funniest landmark to be possessed? The bean. The, the souls of Lincoln will be... Oh, the Chicago bean? Yeah. The Chicago bean, the Millennium bean. The bean. That would be funny. <laughs> Just like flops over. Yeah. August 14th, 2003. More messages are found on Mount Rushmore. Okay, I'm going to wait because this time they're going to tell me what it is. I've learned. Uh, I will introduce infection next week, Monday through Sunday. <laughs> Sounds like someone promoting their band. I will introduce infection next week, Monday to Sunday, 10, 12 to 10, 13. Watch the symptoms. Also, sorry, I will, this is different. Can you see how there's other words on here? Doesn't it, there's an R-O-D. I think that's introduce. Oh, you're right. I will, well, I will, oh yeah, you're right. Introduce, no, you're right. Okay, yep, good one. Good eye. Again, I thought I was insane. Just read the, Stop overthinking, man. Due to security concerns, the National Park Services uh, assigned patrol for the next seven nights. The patrols are told to videotape all anomalies from, uh, anomalies from 10, 12 to 10, 13. But no, if it happens at 10, 14, no. Absolutely not. Is this real footage? This would be awesome if this is someone's just miniature. <laughs> like a replica of it. I didn't see anything. I hear Mount Rushmore is much smaller than... Oh, I saw a flash that time. I hear it's much smaller than, uh, than you would think. It's one of the national landmarks I have not been to. I've been to a decent number. Like, we love road trips. We love visiting new places. My parents have been here, though, and they're like, oh, it was, it was fine. It was small, though. Like, you think of it as this, like, massive mountainside, but apparently it's not. Hmm. Okay, we're introducing infection. Focus. Focus. There you go. Hmm. Makes me curious what in introducing infection is to a giant rock face. Like, <laughs> inject a needle in there. Are they changing? They look kind of the same. You would think that between, like, nights two and three, or three and four, they were like, you know what, what I really need? Like a night vision camera. That would be great. <laughs> Something that I could actually have resolution in the evening. The National Park Service is like, remove lens cap, great. Rushmore revenge on poor cinematography. <laughs> Saturday was just a complete bust. They have mohawks? Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> They're like chia pets! <laughs> ch 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 chia <laughs> By introducing infection, what they were really doing was just spreading, like, some seeds on top and watering them every day so that they, they grew. That's so funny. <laughs> just spikes. They were really sick of birds pooping on top of the monument, so they're like, Pew! It's a violent solution. It is. They chose violence, violence yeah. <laughs> you will not land here, pigeon! Okay, let's see what's going on. Mount Rushmore smells just like baby powder nowadays. I think it comes from the stuff that the workers put on the heads. Yeah, I see them do it all the time. 
They go from Washington to Lincoln every night, powdering it like a baby. <laughs> Hannah McElroy, local photographer. Baby powder. So on one hand, you have... On one hand, you have this monster that lives under the Statue of Liberty. On the other hand, you have children? Baby, why would it smell like baby powder? Like, what are they appeasing? What the, are they powdering? Right? The, the, the top sticks? The, the wigs, you know. Uh, the, the Washington had, a, like, a powdered wig, I'm sure. I'm trying to think. What would like, they powder? You know, honestly, maybe they were just chafing. You know, <laughs> maybe there was some uh, unseasonable wetness up there. Ew. They needed to... Th what? <laughs> On top of their heads! And they needed to dry it out so they didn't chafe, Ash. I'm sorry. Sometimes people have needs. You don't want to deal with scalp itch. You know, here you go, FDR. Here you go, Jefferson. Scratch it up. Here, let's do one more. Let's do Alcatraz attack. These are these are fun. How many are there? This is only season one. Oh, okay. Dean, Dean Democracy, Air Force One. I like... I like the alliteration in all of them. Lincoln Looker, Washington Worm, Delaware Double, Alcatraz. Tag yourself, I'm, I'm the Washington Worm. <laughs> yeah, if I click on that one, I can see you. Yeah, which one of these titles do you think you are? Ooh, me? Yeah. Uh, ooh, Freedom Faller. That's a good, that's a good night name. Um, I think I would be the... Rushmore Revenge is great. You, you gotta be Rushmore I gotta be Revenge. Rushmore Revenge. I gotta go with that. Alcatraz attack sounds fun. It sounds like something that actually happened in history, let's be honest. <laughs> Alcatraz, by the way, if you've never been, again, you know, as we can, oh, two days before therapy, <laughs> you're gonna give Alcatraz therapy, great. If you've never been to any of these locations, right, I, I can't, I can't, uh, encourage it enough like i love checking i'm surprised at how fun a lot of the national monuments and like places to go see are you know having done a bunch of road trips to and from the east and west coast you know and, and seeing the middle of the, the country it's great u.s is awesome um there's a lot of you know like i think it's easy to be like oh pff, grand canyon pff, whatever you know oh that's that's right here in america it's so cool um, and it's so impressive and like you think you know what it is, but it, it looks and feels different in person and getting to hike in and stuff like uh, Yellowstone National Park. Very cool. Yeah, just the, the great redwoods of, you know, the Pacific Northwest or whatever. You know, it's, it sounds cheesy because we sing the song, La Purple Mountains Majesty and all that. But like, it's really good. You, you know, it's I always find myself enjoying it and being like, wow, that that was just as impressive and deserves to be on the postcards and stuff as, as I would expect. Um, you know, the like Everglades and stuff down in Florida and the marshlands in Louisiana. It's, it's, it's really cool. And I'm constantly surprised at how varied the landscape is, even though we're like one country and it's easy to think of like, oh, it's all the same. They're incredibly different. So if you ever get a chance, like check it out, go camping, go to a national park. It's awesome. You ever been to any national parks? Um, I don't think I've been to any national parks, but I have hugged the Liberty Bell. Nice! Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's against some rules. Yeah, I was nine, and the security guards turned their backs, and I was like, hmm, I don't feel any, like, actual desire to do this thing, but what if I could? <laughs> you have this just, like, intrinsic need to crime. <laughs> it's like this, this motive. Thank goodness society has rules of decorum. To keep people like you in check. Yeah, now I, uh, now, now I'm here. Yeah. I sit here and you keep me in check. I, I, I do. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be criming it up. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping a criminal off the streets here, guys. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> if, if you too have a compelling urge to do crime, we'll hire you on. <laughs> bring it on over. Oh, no, then, then you'll talk to Ash, and then it'll be off to the... I don't know, you'll schedule some sort of, like, big heist. We can we could form our own little mafia. Oh, a little heist! Little can, I, I would want to be involved in a heist. I feel like a heist would be fun. Right? Right, a heist would be fun. Wouldn't it? What, what role of the heist would you be? Ooh. Hmm. What role of... Well... 
I, I like cramming my body into small spaces. I'm not a contortionist, but I have a feeling we would have a hard time landing a contortionist. Ooh, so I'll I'm just like, be like the shove him into a small space. I'm like a light contortionist. Oh, okay. Well then, so we have a contortionist wannabe and a light contortionist. So yeah. got our bases covered. No, I'm notoriously bendy. Your lore keeps getting better and better. <laughs> I love it. I'm notoriously bendy. Slap that onto a resume. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ash. I uh, produced for this weird online show called GT Live. Also, I'm notoriously bendy. Yeah. My skill sets include. Oh, that's great. <laughs> heist. We'll talk. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, who will you be in our heist? <laughs> who are you going to be in our upcoming heist? I'm curious. Alcatraz attack. Here we go. Here's the map, Alcatraz. Fortifications. All right. I think I would be. What I want to be. I, I think I want to be like the disguise guy who like disguised as a janitor and walks through <laughs> mopping or whatever and then notoriously bendy ash pops out of my <laughs> my trash bin that I'm wandering around. <laughs> Water tower. The morgue. Okay, the stock stockade. The detector shed. Cool. Main prison. Also, when you visit Alcatraz, you get to sit in one of the cells. That's exciting. The ruins. Don't remember that one on the official tour. The audio guide might have... <laughs> the tennis courts. The audio guide might have mentioned it. Maybe I skipped that one. Ooh. The endo... Is that the endoplasmic reticulum? Oh! It's like a Golgi body. About to say. Right? Is that Golgi body? It looked like some Golgi bodies, my dudes. Yeah! <laughs> so wait, you're telling me Alcatraz is a giant cell? Oh! Cells! Oh, like prison shut, cells! Shut up! <laughs> I think that's what it is! Oh my gosh, where's the mitochondria? Right? The powerhouse of the cell! Is this a plant cell? <laughs> Ooh, if, Are we talking so, like, I mean, if there's a cell wall. wall? Cell walls. It's a prison. Mm. Cell walls. I don't know, though. It looks... <laughs> I love that it's a Golgi body. It really is. It's a, This is it. This is what we're looking at here. It's, it's a diagram of a cell, isn't it? Oh, that's hilarious. And this is like the nucleus or whatever. Oh, I hope that's where we're going with this. <laughs> Golgi body. <laughs> I haven't thought about the parts of a cell in a long time. <laughs> See? Who knew that your middle school science class would pay off at some point? Alcatraz Island, one day before therapy. Of all places, watching a historical horror series. Alcatrazos. Alcatra Alcatrazosis. So it's like a... Like a Mitosis. Yeah, right there it is. Alcatrazosis. Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, it is the cell. Whoa. Oh, it's got DNA now. I like I like that it was hinting at right. I like that it was hinting at it before. Oh, oh man, stretch out those telomeres. Oh man. Oh yeah, there's the. T yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pulling them apart. Mm -hmm. Who's it? Re who's it reproducing with? Here's my question. Well, mitosis is like the asexual one. Yeah, I guess that's meiosis true. Yeah, is is the... meiosis is yeah. the other one. Yeah, no, you're right. That's funny. Oh no, radiation there. Is it, is it dividing uncontrollably? <laughs> just shooting... <laughs> just shooting radiation <laughs> Alright guys, fire the radiation beam, okay. Pew! This is fun. I like this. This is going in directions I did not anticipate. 1950. 1955. Okay, so we're seeing it like grow and divide. So I'm assuming what this is is it was dividing maybe like a cancer cell, right? And that's why we're seeing it, it pulling apart the nucleus and, and DNA and things like that. Nope. What? It's going to the Bay Area? It's infecting the Bay Area? <laughs> no, San Francisco! Standing here at uh, 2023, 2022, 2023 now, I think we're, uh, I think, it's a little bit below its timeline. But yeah, I'm assuming what it was doing was dividing or growing. 
And so they do radiation therapy to like kill its growth or slow its growth, kind of like what you would do with a cancer cell. That's my guess. Oh, it's oh. on the move. It's on the move. Oh, there's more. That's a lot of them. That's a lot of Alcatrazes. <laughs> As of 2020, the Alcatraz zone extends to West Texas. Wait a minute. Where have I been this whole time? The Alcatraz zone <laughs> extends to West Texas. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm loving this series. This is really fun. I'm so glad I went in blind. Where was I the whole time? Alcatraz, man. Good for them. North Carolina, Matt. I guess. East Coast isn't worried about that. No. We're worried about the... the... Can't smell the Statue of Liberty here. <laughs> no, certainly not. I was going to say, what are we worried about? We're worried about the Bahamas breakout. We're worried about... The... <laughs> We're worried about what? The, the the Panama peril. I don't know. I'm trying to... What? There's like... There's the out, a battleship. There, there, and there's also a battleship. Yeah. The the battleship like the, barrage. The... Ba yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What, what's, what's replicating over here? I've lost the battleship. Um, the, the Atlantic assault. The Atlantic Assault. There it is. That's 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 our episode. It hasn't been. It's part of season two. Atlantic Assault, where suddenly all the North Carolina beaches are just being rampaged by seaweed. <laughs> it's not a monument. There's no monuments around. I'm trying to think of what a good monument around here would be. It's not the acorn. Raleigh, North Carolina yes. has an acorn. They drop it at the at at New Year's Eve every year. You know how New York has like the the ball drop, the crystal ball. That drops. Raleigh, North Carolina has an acorn. So that's what it is. Yeah. The Raleigh Rampage. The Raleigh Rampage. The Raleigh Rampage. And it's an acorn. That acorn suddenly gr agony. <laughs> that suddenly grows arms and legs. And like, wah! It runs at the camera and attacks. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's, you know, that's what happens when you're a small town. <laughs> you get the random acorn attack. The acorn is like the only monument that matters it's, in, in Raleigh. It's, it is. It is. For it being a random statue in the middle of, like, the town. Like, people care about that a lot. Every town has their one thing that they care about, though. Like, growing up in Medina, Ohio. Shout out, Medina, Ohio bees! Woo! Uh, all you AI Root fans and your bee candles. Um, the the gazebo is what everyone the cares gazebo. about. The gazebo. Everyone loves the gazebo mm -hmm. in the center of town. I, I was up in Ohio recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, visiting my family. And, uh, I mean, we went to the square you know, the center of Medina, and we went to the gazebo, and man, it was a bop. Yeah. Gazebo. It was great. It was it's gazebo important. goodness. Gazebo goodness. Gazebo goodness. Uh, <laughs> gazebo Golgi bodies. <laughs> Little did I know that it was a living, sentient cell the entire time, ready to replicate. Um, how are we doing time-wise? Should we do one more, or is that good for today? Because this is fun. I, I can I keep going. This is fun. Squeeze in one more. Squeeze in one more. Okay, I'll, yes. I'll shut up. <laughs> I'll actually watch more. Oh, of course, it's Dean Democracy with eight minutes. Maybe we'll get the Dean scream. Should we do Dean or should we do Air Force? Like, should we do a short one? Hmm. I don't think they don't seem like they're really building off of each other. It seems like they're standalone right now. Let's do Air Force Angel. Okay. Air Force One Angel. And then we'll come back and pick up Dean maybe next time. Just so we have a shorter one. On August 17th, 2003, Air Force One made an unannounced trip across the continental United States. Is Air Force One alive? <laughs> Just the plane. Many civilians claim to have seen the aircraft drop packages on various national monuments. Okay. It's got to feed them, man. There it goes. Beautiful. There it goes. Ooh, where's it headed to? What monuments is it visiting? Oh, visiting Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I like that someone got a picture of it. Okay. Oh, Golden Gate Bridge! <laughs> really? It's <laughs> What's living in the bridge? Also, this is a horrifically uh, ill-conceived and very poorly optimized route, if that's what they did. 
Okay, Statue of Liberty, which is gone. Right? It looks kind of gone there. Right? I'm not seeing it down there. That's weird. Right? I can't, I can't see it. I can't really see the shape of it, but I mean, maybe it's just resolution is bad, but I like that they're like, you know what we're going to do? Fly to the middle of the country, west coast, all the way back to the east coast, even though we, we took off literal like minutes from there in the back. No, no love for Alcatraz in the Alcatraz zone. Just saying. Also, St. Louis Arch. You're missing some key guys. There's some, there's some big boys here in the middle. <laughs> Again, the acorn in Raleigh. <laughs> they miss the acorn. They miss the acorn, which I understand. St. Louis Arch, though, feels like a, like a big get. You know, Seattle Space Needle. That's a biggie. That's great. I mean, the Hollywood sign. I'm... <laughs> I mean, the Hollywood sign's corrupted even without government conspiracy. Let's be... It's Hollywood. Uh, you know, d the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. That's a big thing. <laughs> that exists. Disneyland. <laughs> that's already spreading. Doing way too good of a job of spreading. You can see his pop. He's coming out. Who's coming out? Is it an alien? Is it a monster? Is it a leprechaun? <laughs> Call back. <laughs> White House officials later disclosed that the unusual flight of Air Force One was unauthorized and unmanned. The lone figure seen inside the plane dubbed the Air Force One Angel has yet to be identified by federal authorities. Hmm. It's impressive to fly, fly a plane that size all by yourself. Huh. That was a calming one. I like that one. I'm so glad it brought you peace. Peace? Yeah, I feel, I feel at peace with that one. <laughs> huh. Monument Mythos. This is fun. I like this. I don't know where it's going. Lincoln Looker. It. This is so fun. All right, I think that's a good place to to wrap it for today, right? We're we're good on time, you think? Yeah, I think so. We've watched what five of them? Three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we've done four. I don't want to watch too many all at once, um, just so we could spread it out a bit. Overall thoughts? I like it. I think this is fun. This is from uh, the channel Mr. Manticore. If you want to get ahead on me here, uh, support the Monument Mythos on the Ko-Fi. Some really cool stuff that they have going on here. Creepy Avatar. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this series. Uh, like I said, I'm not exactly sure. On one hand, you have Alcatraz. That's a living, breathing cell, presumably, or a living, dividing cell. On the other hand, you have a monster that lives in the pedestal of Statue of Liberty. You're also feeding and pow baby powdering the tops of Mount Mushmore. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, clearly, it seems like... You know, they're trying to tamp down or appease some, like, ancient gods. Or or some, like, monsters that live, like, maybe in the core of the earth or something like that. That's that's where I'm immediately going to. At first, I thought maybe the, the monuments themselves were alive, but it seems like that's not the case. Uh, but it does seem like we are living on borrowed time, borrowed land, that these giant, you know, almost celestials, right? If you think about it in a Marvel context, right? These giant beings that have existed, we live amongst them, and we're, like, borrowing their land, or we're living here because we're able to appease them and keep them at bay, uh, which is why you have all this stuff happening. I don't know if that's wrong or right. I don't know where we're headed with that. Maybe Dean Democracy next time will be able to weigh in for us. But there you go. Uh, anyway, that is Mr. Manticore, uh, the Monument Mythos. Check it out. It looks like it's going to be fun. I would be shocked if we don't do a film theory on this because uh, I have a feeling that there's going to be plenty here to talk about once I get through the whole thing. So, uh, anyway, support the channel. As always, if there are any uh, spooky ARG, ARG or, uh, you know, any sort of analog horror things that you want me to react to, live theory, theory craft about, send them my way. I'm always looking for new suggestions. And uh, that's about it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And as a reminder, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya!